Hello, everyone. Tukui shungua and kuya ni mi, with everything in me, in my heart, I greet you with all the love that I have. And love is a big topic of this course in one way or another. It has to do with connection to one another and to everything, to each thing anywhere and in any place, any time, as a way of realizing our potential to be connected. And we live in a world, you know, with many, many big problems right now, uh, several of them reaching crisis proportions all at once, and every problem rooted in a disconnection. So we need to create connection. So I'm happy to be here. This was the idea for this course. It came out of this uh, fact that I was seeing so much disconnection just everywhere and uh, virtually every dimension in life. And I thought it would be good to uh, pass along some of the powerful teachings I received from my uh, Atlas Kichwa teacher, Don Alberto Toxo, uh, who had a tremendous impact on my life, my philosophy, my practice my work and uh, has influenced the teachings I've done all over the world, working on four continents for the last 14 years, uh, carrying uh, wisdom I actually received from him and uh, practice myself. But my background is really in two lineages. One is the Jungian lineage. And as I see it, that's the Western shamanic tradition, you know, Going back, you know, you could throw James Hillman in there and other people, Arnie Mandel, but going back through Freud and Nietzsche and back through the uh, hypnotists earlier in the era and the great poets, you know, Dante, Goethe, Shakespeare, all the way back to Virgil and Homer and so on and to pre-Western origins in the Middle East and so on. So there's a long, rich history just within Western uh, civilization and culture. It's usually been underground and somewhat at odds with the official religions of, of the day and the politics of the day, but it's there. And the other lineage uh, is just shamanic. But uh, for me, uh, I did my field work, my initiatory work in the Americas, North, Central, and South. And uh, the reason for that was because I had my own kind of shamanic uh, crisis and uh, initiatory crack up. And uh, I got into Jungian analysis and my analyst said, well, you need a shaman. This is not, not something we can do here and you need to get out into the wilderness. So I, I found a North American medicine man and worked with him a while, did a vision quest and all that. But uh, in time, it led me to Mexico and then to uh, South America, Ecuador, Peru. And someone introduced me to Don Alberto Toxo. And uh, he was the first really enlightened shaman that I had met. I mean, his heart was completely open. He lived continually in the present. He had a depth that uh, matched any uh, Tibetan Lama whom I've listened to or read. And in fact, he had uh, Tibetan lamas uh, living on his property on Mount Cotopaxi, uh, learning from him. And uh, I was amazed how deep his knowledge went. And uh, so I decided to apprentice to him. And uh, he told me, he says, well, you're going to be very disappointed <laughs> because uh, what I have to teach you is not what you already know. Uh, you know, I had all these university degrees, including doctorates. And um, uh, he said, you know, 50,000 ideas uh, don't do you much good. Uh, all you need is two, and you need to practice them. So he was challenging me there. And uh, what he wanted me to practice was the idea of opening my heart and using my capacity to feel and to rely less on my intellectual knowledge. And uh, this sounded wonderful, but uh, I kept expecting spectacular ceremonies and lots of magic. And uh, he kept reminding me that uh, that's the mind's addiction to being fascinated, you know, and hungry and what's neat ideas and neat images and this sort of thing. But really, it's profounder to simply connect. 
uh, through opening the heart and the capacity to feel. Then you can have all that if you like it. You know, you can be a philosopher, you can create ideas, there's nothing wrong. He, he, he believed the mind was an important ally of the heart. And uh, he was a proponent of the Pachacuti philosophy. How many of you know about that philosophy? You can raise your hand if you do. Yeah. So um, it's a, a prophecy that uh, started emerging in the late 1980s. It'd been around for centuries uh, in South America, but South America and shamans getting together and uh, putting their uh, concerns together about uh, Western civilization and its uh, devastation of their own cultures, its exploitation of the resources of the planet. And they, they saw Western civilization they called it the peoples of the north because they're in the south, uh, as having a highly developed capacity to think, but it's used in wrong ways, harmful ways, because it's not in sync with the heart and it's not being guided by the heart. So uh, that what he saw and many of his elders and people from other tribes, elders from other tribes were seeing this as their kind of a diagnosis on uh, Western civilization that we had strong gifts in the capacity to think, science, technology, uh, money making, uh, but it seemed to them the purpose of life for people in the West was to get secure, get safe, uh, make a lot of money if you can, uh, have unlimited uh, extension of your self-interests and uh, have enough wealth to take what you want. This is how it's been seen. And I think it's largely true. And uh, so this is a mind or a thinking mind infected with uh, a virus. This is how it's looked at. And, you know, some of the Native Americans in, in the Northern uh, Hemisphere view this as a, the Watika virus, you know, a kind of spiritual uh, uh, virus that invades uh, our minds and our cultures and is very destructive. So what they felt we needed was uh, to bring the power of the heart and its capacity to feel together with the power of the mind and its capacity to think and plan and strategize and get them in right relationships so there's an equilibrium and a balance. And how to do that yourself to help Mother Earth uh, uh, not be so reactive to our destructive ways of living, but to help Mother Earth not throw us off like a bunch of infected fleas that are destroying life on the planet. So the idea here was they used the symbol of two birds, the condor being a bird of the heart, the power of the heart, and uh, the condor the Andean condor can have a wingspan up to 12 feet and they fly at 25,000 feet launching off mountain peaks. And uh, they have a 2000 mile sweep and they can see prey on the ground from their lofty high, heights, which they go with their scavengers. So they clean up the environment they go and they, they claim the uh, scavenge. Uh, and so this seemed to be a good metaphor for living in a heart open and earth honoring way. And then the eagle they saw is the power of the mind, uh, which, uh, as I already said, is the capacity to think and strategize and plan and use reason. And uh, it could really be helpful in us um, changing our way of life on the planet if it were in relationship with the condor. So the prophecy was that they saw in 500 years, which was about 1500 AD, they saw in about 500 years, the crisis would come and the opportunity for the eagle and the condor to fly together in some equilibrium. Uh, the heart slightly leading the way because the mind itself is generally socially programmed by knowledge that we get from culture, we get from education and so on. So it's just gonna mirror what the culture is saying. And uh, so we need a clean mind so it can follow and be an ally of the heart and uh, help the heart manifest what it sees needs manifesting or wants to manifest 
but in a way that's harmonious with Mother Earth. So that's the nutshell of the Pachacuti prophecy. And what I'm going to be teaching today and uh, in parts of each uh, succeeding week uh, is indebted uh, particularly to the uh, Addis Kisawa shaman and his elders, Don Alberto Toxo. And anything I teach has the, the blessing and the backing of many, many South American elders to share this information. This is not something that's culturally appropriating from another culture and taking it over. They see clearly, if we do not learn how to live from the heart, our days are numbered on this planet and we're gonna take a lot of other species needlessly, foolishly with us when we go out. But there is big hope because we are each Mother Earth walking, talking, eating, shopping, sleeping, dreaming. We are that. We are the manifestation of that. We are literally, not symbolically, Mother Earth walking, each one of us. So we are elements of her body. We're each part of our mother. You know, she's birthed us, but she sustains us, she nourishes us. She can heal us and center us with the power of, of these primordial elements, you know, the earth, wind, fire, water. And so uh, the system I'm going to be teaching you begins with connecting with the elements uh, with an open heart. And I'll be saying more about how you open the heart in a little bit. But I just kind of wanted to give you the overview. <clears throat> 